How's it going, everybody? And welcome to Just Nobody's Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan. And I'm your host, Daniel. And today we're doing a podcast. Woo! If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button. It's the one with the thumb going up. When you hit it, there'll be fireworks. Your life will be better. There's positivity in the world. People, happiness, love. Yeah. Your crush will text you back. <laughs> and uh, if it gets 3,000 likes, we're going to giving one of these hot toys to one of you guys. It has to get 3,000 likes in seven days. Okay? Let's seven start. days. Also, comment what you guys want us to talk about next week. As you guys saw, we're taking your guys' suggestions from last week, and we're talking about it this week. So let's get into the podcast. Woo! Okay, so getting right into it, today we are going to be talking about a bunch of different things, but the first thing I want to talk about is the deadliest toys oh. that we all owned as kids, but if you are alive today, you're probably one of the lucky ones. You are. It probably are. Okay, so the first deadliest toy that I want to talk about is Rollerblade Barbie, okay? Oh. Now, it sounds like it's all fun and games. Yeah. Right? We got Barbie. We got Ken. <laughs> they're on the beach rollerblading. What can go wrong? Yeah, I remember those. What's interesting about these toys is... Just for everyone who doesn't know, basically you have these rollerblade Barbies. They look like a regular Barbie on the beach, but she would be wearing these rollerblades. Okay. And what you do is you roll her, you know, across a, a hard surface. Yeah. And the rollerblades would spark. Right? Oh. And it would shoot sparks yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. And what's crazy about the mechanism that was in the rollerblades is that it's the same mechanism. The wheel is the same wheel that they use in cigarette lighters to ignite the fire. What? So just think about that. Right? It's already yeah. dangerous as it is. <laughs> and apparently what ends up happening is, is obviously when a spark is ignited, it shoots out sparks. Whatever is flammable in the area yeah. is going to catch on fire. Right. So think about this. Some girls had really long hair. Little girls had long oh hair. Oh, my gosh. Right? Some boys had long hair that were using it. Yeah. And it would catch on fire and ignite the hair. Are you whose idea was that? They're you. Th it's basically a flint and steel then. Yeah, as the wheel. It's exactly that, and you could see it on the bottom. Yeah, and you know what happened was too like when you had like um hairspray in your hair, it oh. was even more deadly. Even if you're doing it next to like carpet in your house, it'll hit the carpet. Oh, hundred percent, because the sparks would fly off, you know, the table or wherever. Dude, what is this toy? <laughs> But if anybody has access to one of these rollerblade Barbies, apparently it's a huge collector's item. If it's in the box, you could sell it for thousands. I don't know. It's just worth thousands. I think it was like a thousand. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the second deadliest toy. We all had hammocks growing up, but this hammock was released in the 1990s. Super popular. It was called the mini hammock. The mini hammock. And basically what it was was, <laughs> was a hammock, yeah. but smaller. Okay. And most hammocks that we all own will have like a wood rod at the ends of it. So, you know, when, it cl when you lay in it, it kind of collapses. The wood rods are here and it kind of just goes oh, like around you. It encloses you. Right. But since there's wood rods, right, it allows it to just always hit the rod and you could just open it up, you know, open it up. Right, right, right. But what's crazy about the mini hammock was there was no wooden rod. So what it would do is it would collapse on the person yeah. and fold over a bunch of times, right, and spin them. Whoa. And it would kill kids and suffocate them. Wait, okay, okay. Hang on a second. So there was nothing that would stop the hammock from collapsing on itself. Right. So it was just getting the kids caught in there. It was like a cocoon that they couldn't get out of. Right, and the cocoon would start spinning, right? And it gets even tighter. Um, and especially if they start, like, struggling, yeah. they'll, it'll just keep spinning. You start leaning one side, right? It's just going to go like that. Oh, my god. So apparently what happened was they recalled three million of these hammocks, and... I think it's completely off the market now. That is crazy. A hammock. A and hammock. especially because it's a mini hammock, right? So it's catered towards kids. Right. It's Are for little, little kids. That's scary. Like small, very small kids. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. The third deadliest toy is the Austin Magic Pistol. Huh. I don't think I've heard of this one. It came out in like the 1940s, and it was this gun. And it was very futuristic looking gun. Okay. Right? Because it was very popular at the time, the idea of the future. Yeah. And what this gun would do is it would shoot ping pong balls. Oh. But it would use calcium chloride crystals to, as gunpowder to what? ignite the ping pong ball to fly out of the gun. That already doesn't sound good. I don't even know what calcium chloride really does, but that doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah. Think about this, right? It was literally a gun that would shoot ping pong balls. Yeah. It would shoot that fast that it would fly out of the gun. Okay. But instead of a bullet, it was a ping pong. Yeah. Just think about a bullet speed, right? Yeah. But just with a ping pong. 
so it was going like that fast like it was it wasn't like a little nerf like like little dink right it was moving so there was two factors that made this toy really dangerous okay. right is one it would shoot the ping pong balls really fast yeah but two it was using calcium chloride crystals and what's dangerous about calcium chloride is whenever it, water gets in it or saliva uh-huh. or any kind of liquid that was like a you know, h2o yeah it would cause an explosion what so what was happening was <laughs> it would be these chemical reactions where it would create like a fireball and blow up and it was blowing up people's hands kids hands without even shooting a ping pong ball what are they doing who thinks to use a thing that could ignite with just water no i know so what happened was obviously they saw the dangers of this right away yeah um uh, and they you know took it off the shelves but it's weird how police today actually considered that Austin Magic Pistol as a real life firearm. Like it's registered as a firearm. So if you are caught with it, right, you are considered caught with a firearm. Are you serious? That's how dangerous so it was. It's almost like you need to get that toy registered as a gun to have it. Yeah. What? But you, I, I mean, you can't get right. That you can't get that registered. But you just shouldn't own it. Gosh, it's like playing like a gun version of Sting Pong. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the fourth deadliest toy is creepy crawlers. Okay. So for everyone that doesn't, that doesn't oh. know about creepy crawlers is there was these molds. Okay. These molds were like in shapes of different, you know, monsters and bugs. Uh-huh. And they would give you these little solutions and little chemicals that you pour into the molds. And then there's this little oven that you put the trays in and it would harden and make little plastic toys. Oh, I feel like I remember this. Yeah, it was super popular. Yeah. So what's crazy about this toy was that not only was the oven aspect really dangerous because kids were burning their hands, uh-huh. right? It was also releasing a lot of chemical, like these gas chemicals coming from the plastic being made. What? All like all the stores, the manufacturers, the parents, it was expressed about the dangers of it, but it was such a popular toy, they kept selling it. Are you kidding this me? This went on from the 1960s to the 1990s. They kept selling it even though they knew it was dangerous. Yeah. And not only did they come out with different models, they have a, had a TV show. The different models, they actually created an um, edible one. And what? they also created a Hot Wheel one, which you might remember. Remember? Yeah, that? I remember that you one. You could make your own Hot Wheels. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But that company is the same company that did Creepy Crawlers. That is scary because I remember we wanted that. That Hot Wheel one. Yeah. It was such a cool concept, right? Make your own Hot Wheel. Yeah. Who wouldn't want that? So it like creates like a chemical reaction in the plastic and it emits like a chemical gas. Yeah. Oh I mean, there was God. a lot of things wrong with it. Like, you know, cancer causing chemicals, the heat, you know, yeah. it's just not a good toy. Yeah. So. Even to give a kid an oven is ridiculous. Yeah. Like an easy bake oven. Yeah. That was also one of the deadliest toys. That's we, ridiculous. We talked about that one before though. Yeah. So moving on to the fifth deadliest toy is Sky Dancers. Okay. So Sky Dancers, for everyone that doesn't know, is you would have a base, and then you would have like a Barbie-looking toy on top with some wings and a string. And you would pull the string, and all of a sudden, the Sky Dancer would lift off in the air, start spitting, right? Right. But her wings, right, acted as if they were blades. Yeah. I remember this. Because it w- it's technically a helicopter. Right. So it would fly and just whack kids in the head. Right. So it would whack kids in the head, right? It would actually cut open people's heads, yeah. kids' heads. It cut people's corneas open, their eyes, right. made them blind, cut their faces, causes lacerations, cut their arms, and even cut some fingers off. I mean, we're talking like these are real life blades here. Yeah. I remember. This is, this is a deadly one. Yeah. Did we talk about this before? I think we have. Okay. Because I was like, dude, I feel like I've heard this. Yeah. But it's crazy how these toys that look so innocent, but then when you look at the whole like function of them, you're like, oh, wow, that is pretty dangerous. Because... I mean, it is a cool concept, right? You just you just have like this thing that just starts flying, right? Right. But then when you think about it, that thing could hurt you bad. Oh, yeah. Okay, so moving on. This is the sixth deadliest toy. Okay. Okay, this toy is called lawn darts. Lawn darts? Have you heard of lawn darts? I feel like I have. Okay, so these lawn darts were basically these large darts that you would throw in your backyard, and there would be like a hula hoop on the ground, and you try to land the dart in the hula hoop. Oh, okay. But what was so interesting about these darts and dangerous was that they were huge darts. It was like if Hank Pym created a dart <laughs> and made it super size. So it's a legit dart. Yeah, it's sharp at the end. That's just big. Right, and it would just 
you know, fly, you throw it, and it was so sharp and big, it would land right into your grass and puncture a hole in the grass and stand up. What? So, as you can see, right, already, that is super dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> so, at, I mean, the story goes, and this is like, a, it was a whole legal issue. Okay. Apparently, a kid, right, had yeah. a, thrown it, okay. trying to hit it into the hula hoop, right? Uh-huh person probably wasn't very athletic or whatever <laughs> overshoots his whole backyard what throws it over the neighbor's fence hits a girl's head with the <gasps> dart and kills her are you serious yeah okay to be fair yeah that kid right the little boy that threw it or a little girl that threw it yeah like i don't even blame the kid how would you know as a little kid right, right. your parents buy you this toy you're like oh yeah just throw it right yeah oh, it's just so sad but like the reality is, what's up with the adults at the time? Not like you didn't sell that toy. Yeah, that's definitely not a toy for kids. You don't know what kids would do with a jumbo, like sharp yeah, object. Yeah, think about it, right? The big dart, right? And at yeah. the end, there's a big old like thing on it, like the sharp needle. Yeah, you don't think the kids gonna like poke people with it? That's crazy, guys. Let us know if there's any deadliest toys that you guys owned out of these six that we talked about, and also comment some that we missed, and let us know if we want to talk about more deadliest toys. So let's get moving on to the next thing. So welcome back to Versus, where we're going to talk about two characters that we pin against each other, and we see who will win in a fight. Who are we uh, fighting today? Okay, so the first one is Human Torch versus Iceman. Human Torch versus Iceman. Now we've seen Iceman versus Pyro. Yeah. Which is very similar. Right. But we've never seen Human Torch versus Iceman. Ooh. Gosh. Man, that is a tough one. Yeah. Because we know, okay, Pyro was a little bit, like, reckless. Like, he wasn't very smart. Human Torch, kind of reckless, but he's smart. Yeah. And Pyro took a while to realize that he could engulf his whole body. (laughs) So, Human Torch, his whole body's on fire if he wants it to be. Yeah. I think you got to give it to Human Torch. That's a hard one, though. Yeah, because let me tell you something. What, what do you think about it like this, like the science aspect of yeah. it? Fire can't extinguish water. Oh, yeah. Well, it can't. It can melt the ice. It's, it can melt the ice, and it could evaporate water. Right. That is true. But I just feel like, overall, water should beat fire. Water should put out fire faster than fire could evaporate water or melt ice. We're going to go Human Torch. I think. Human Torch, comment what you guys think. Wait, didn't we? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> guys, my nose, my allergies is off the rocker <laughs> right now. It is just like the season of falling down the mountain. <laughs> All right? It's a landslide. Flood warning. <laughs> Flood warning. So we're going with Iceman. On yes, Iceman. Iceman. So this one, Magneto okay. versus Wolverine without adamantium. <sighs> so with the bone claws. No metal in him. You have to preface, too. We're not talking about the comic books. We're talking about... You're talking about Ian McKinnon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Magneto may not be able to control Wolverine, but, but he'll control everything around him, right? Right. But... Well, we kind of saw this actually happen in uh, Days of Future's Past, right? Where we see Magneto... Doesn't he, like, put Wolverine in, like, like iron or something or metal? Oh, the barbed. Right. The barbed. Even though he had wooden claws at the time? I think you're right. Are they sent to the back, like the bottom of the ocean? Oh, yeah. We're going to give it to Michael Fassbender. Magneto. Yeah, because Magneto could just do that and then take a metal blade decapitated. Wha-bam. Okay, so Juggernaut versus Iron Man. Juggernaut versus Iron Man. Yeah. Iron Man, 100%. Without the, without the Hulkbuster armor, though. Well, you can't start dropping stuff like that. Okay, fine. <laughs> He has his Iron Man suit, though? Yeah. This suit right here. That suit right there. Nanotech. It's like, is that Mark 80 or something? I forgot what Mark that is. Okay. Uh, I mean, it just depends. You think Juggernaut could beat Thanos? Can Juggernaut beat Thanos? No. Thanos beat Hulk? Yeah. I think you give it to Iron Man. I think you'd outsmart him. That is true. He probably would outsmart him. Yeah. Iron Man. So, the evil family from Get Out. Okay. Or a tethered family from us. <sighs> tethered family? Aren't they, like, more ruthless and, like... Well, they're, like, they just go out and kill, right? Right. The get-out family is more, like, premeditated. Like, they need to get you in a certain spot. Uh-huh. But the tethered family, if you're out in the woods, I'd rather 
fight the Get Out family than the Tethered family. Okay, that is true. Yeah. The Tethered families are pretty crazy, pretty gnarly. If you guys ever seen Us, you guys know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't seen Us, you should watch it. Or don't, because you're going to be scared for like, the rest <laughs> okay. of your life. Okay, the last one. Killmonger as the Black Panther okay. versus Batman. Killmonger as the Black Panther or Batman. Yeah. Gosh, it's like you can't even put them up against each other, but <laughs> I'm going to go out on a whim and say, Ugh. this one's kind of hard. You got Shuri's technology going against Bruce Wayne's technology. We're talking about in a room. We're not talking about like in the middle of Gotham City. We're talking about like in a yeah. ring. In like a ring, yeah. Weapons or no weapons? Uh, well, I guess they yeah, have all gotta, their weapons. Yeah, you got to have all the weapons. Yeah. They're both really good fighters. I mean, Batman, strong guy. Could Killmonger be punctured by like anything other than vibranium? I don't think so because the only way T'Challa was able to puncture him is because he turned on the train, right? And it was messing up the suit. Right. I give it to Killmonger. Yeah, I think so too. Even though Batman, sorry, even though Batman's super smart. Yeah. Killmonger, I mean, come on, guys. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at the Dark Knight suit, right? It's not bulletproof, okay? Because they took out bulletproof to, for, like, mobility. So he can get stabbed by a knife. Yeah. Killmonger can... has the claws. <laughs> yeah. So Killmonger wins. Okay, and thank you for watching Versus. But we're going to bring something back that we haven't done in a really long time. So I think it's time to bring back Dumb Ways to Die. Where you see what happens when you lose too many brain cells. Okay, so the first one. So you know how a lot of trucks and bigger cars have that thing on their roof where you can, like, put stuff off on, right? If right. you want to travel, like, people put sleds or they put a bunch of, like, Bikes, luggage. Right. Bike rack. Bike rack. And people usually tie this stuff down, right? Because they don't want it to fly off well, when they're driving. most. Most people, okay? So these two ladies decided to go get some mattresses. Okay. But they had the little rack on their car but they didn't have anything to tie the mattresses down. So instead of just waiting, maybe and try to get some help, maybe go buy some, some things to tie it down. They decide to send one girl outside the car to lay on the mattresses. So and look, hold the sides of the car okay. laying on the mattresses to be that tie to hold the mattresses to the car while the other one drives okay, okay, stop, home. Stop, stop, stop. So the mattresses on top of the car are laying flat, right? Yes. Someone's on top of the mattress, one hand going in one side of like a window, yeah. and then another hand going in the other side of the window, laying on top of it, holding it like this. Holding it, yes. Nice. While they're driving. Nice. Welcome to Dumb Ways to Die. <laughs> you could think what's going to happen. Doesn't hang on long. Right. Falls off, dies. Yeah, that's sad. But, I mean, dude, what are you doing? You know? Yeah. Like... <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's just move on. So the next one, we're in like a lawyer's office, okay? It's a very tall building. There's about 50 floors in the okay. building. Now, these two lawyers start arguing about the Olympics, okay. right? And they also start arguing about their careers as athletes when they were younger and how fast they were. So they decide, you know what? Let's just settle this. Let's go race down the hall. Okay. One of them doesn't have very good eyesight, so he has to take off his glasses because he doesn't want it to fall off while he's running. Yeah. So they start running down the hall. The guy without the glasses loses his perception of everything around him. Okay. okay? Runs straight through the window on the 39th floor. Why do I feel like we've talked about a ton ways there where someone ran out the window? Because a lot of people run out the window. Wow. The last one we talked about, right, was a guy trying to prove that his glass was super strong in his office. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. And he ran through it. Right. So this guy just couldn't see. And accidentally ran a little too far. Yeah. Well, in his mind, he won the race. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, so the next one. These two guys wanted to go fishing. So they took like their little like 14-foot boat, and they were rowing it together. But what they didn't go normal fishing. They went dynamite fishing. Okay. What is dynamite fishing? So I they, just feel like that's... They take a bag of dynamite. Okay? okay. They light a dynamite. They throw it in the water. Okay. It explodes, and they just see the fish. Rise to the Oh, so it's like some Red Dead Redemption fishing. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't know, like, in Red Dead Redemption, you can, like, get a dynamite stick and throw it in the water and, like, blow up the fish. Yeah. And all the fish come to the surface. So what they did, okay, they're in a river, right? And a river usually goes in one direction, the current, right? So they're going with the current. Yeah. But they throw the dynamite behind them. Okay. 
so they throw it behind them. Yeah. Obviously, the water is going to take it under them. Right. So it, it's going to blow up, and it's almost like going to propel the boat, right? Right, but what happened was the dynamite went into the water. The current took it under the boat. Oh, I see what you mean. And it blew them up. Okay. Now, one was able to swim away. When you say swim away, like it blew up, then swam away? Or yeah, like... but the other one got hit like directly under him. So right, and that's why they're on dumb ways to die. That's exactly yeah. why. You can't survive and be on dumb ways to die. Yeah, so the last one, okay. These five guys wanted to go rob this warehouse and start cutting up the warehouse to get scrap metal. So they, they broke in just to steal scrap metal? Or they yeah. were trying to like, cut the walls down at the, the place to get the scrap? They broke into the warehouse to okay. cut things in the warehouse to get scrap metal. Nice. So what they did was they broke in, and they have like these power saws, right? Like the super strong, you have to cut through everything. Yeah. The, thing, the first thing they go for are the metal beams inside the building. Okay, now, what they didn't know, these metal beams are the beams supporting the building. So they're cutting <laughs> the support. Yeah. You can see where this is going. They keep cutting. They keep cutting. Collapses the building on them. All five of them. Nice. Yeah. That's karma. Don't steal. Don't steal that crap, scrap metal. <laughs> and thank you for watching Dumb Ways to Die. Guys, this week we saw Cocaine Bear. And Cocaine Bear, if you guys don't know, is about a real-life event about... <laughs> This guy, okay, we talked about it on the podcast before. Basically, this millionaire, you know, was flying above, you know, the forests and the mountains and everything, yeah. but he had a bunch of contraband, like drugs and everything. So he, you know, throws all the drugs out the, win- out the window of the plane and-, and then he jumps out of the plane. But the next day, they found him dead on a driveway. Yeah. Right? And they found him with like a fanny pack, some Gucci flip flops. Yeah. And a gun. <laughs> and basically, the story goes is that, uh, a bear ate the cocaine and unfortunately in real life it died right and people you know became one of the most famous bears people wanted to have the bear like, in their house taxidermy is that what you call it when you get the, the I, i'm not sure well whatever you call it when you fill like a, you stuff it yeah like a yeah. carcass right yeah and you fill it up and it's alive still right because they made it like almost like a display piece right and everyone was buying this, you know, statue. It ended up all the way in like, I can't, can't remember China or something. It's something crazy. And basically, now it's at an, a mall. But this bear actually lived on, and it's the most expensive bear around. Yeah. And now I'm sure it's even more expensive. Yeah. But the movie took it in a little bit of a different direction. <laughs> yeah. The movie is if the bear never died, and it was just on cocaine. Yeah, and it just. It just goes crazy. Yeah, so uh, give it a watch. It's, it's exactly what you would expect. You can't take a movie seriously. Like, you can't go and like, critique it because yeah. it's, like, it's trying to be funny. Right. It's not trying to be serious. Yeah, and I really think it's going to become a classic film. There were so many funny moments that were throughout the whole movie. It's very graphic, though. It is graphic. It is graphic. You'll see some, you know, organs that you haven't seen in movies. And you'll see some... Ways to die that you've never seen before. Yeah. So, guys, go check out Cocaine Bear if you're the age of 17 and up. Yeah. Give it a watch. And if you're not the age of 17, go ask your parents. Yeah. Or your guardian. Just wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. Wait for it to get on, you know, streaming. (laughs) I'm joking. Still, you must ask your parents for permission. (laughs) Or your guardians, okay? I'm not saying you should just watch it. (laughs) Okay, so moving on, there's a lot of things going on with the whole Spider-Man universe right now. There's rumors that Tom Holland's going to be in this cross Spider-Verse. Yeah. There was rumors back like a year ago that Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire were going to be in the cross Spider-Verse. And apparently, from a trusted source, Tom Holland's supposed to be in it. Really? It's going to be a live action version. Wait, what? Yeah. If they bring in a live action one, not. That's going to be pretty crazy. Okay, so do you know the crazy Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse theory? So we all know that Miles is from Earth 1610, and he was bit by a radioactive spider, but what if I told you that he was actually not supposed to be bit, 
and he wasn't supposed to be Spider-Man at all. What? So throughout the Spider-Verse movies, whenever we see a character that doesn't belong in that universe and they're not supposed to be there, they start to like start dying and glitching out. Just like when we see all the Spider-Man variants in Miles' universe. Right, they all have like that glitching effect on them. Exactly, and in the new Spider-Verse movie, Spider-Man 2099 is going to be chasing Miles and trying to capture him. And Miles is the only Spider-Man that's not allowed to be in the Spider-Force. But they allow Gwen to be in the Spider-Force. But there's a reason why that they're not saying. Even the creators of the Spider-Verse movie are saying that the big secret is why Miles is not able to join the Spider-Force. Yeah, why isn't he a part of it? So this is where the theory comes in. There's a theory that the reason why Miles can't join the Spider-Force is because he was actually bit by a spider that doesn't belong to his universe. Because we see the spider that bit Miles actually starts glitching out, showing that they don't belong to that universe that Miles is in. What? Yeah, because everything that's in the incorrect universe will start to glitch because it's not supposed to be there. So that means Miles actually has powers that belongs to a different universe, and he really shouldn't be Spider-Man at all. And this is causing a bunch of issues across the Spider-Verse, and that's why he can't join the Spider-Force. Okay, I completely forgot about the spider scene. Because when you see the spider coming down, you see it glitch. Yeah. That actually makes a lot of sense, though. So speaking of crazy movies, I have to bring this up. I mean, we all love The Wizard of Oz. It's one of... America's classic films that, you know, it's always going to be instilled in everybody's mind as, like, one of the first big movies. Yeah. But do you know all the dark, horrific things that happened during the filming of Wizard of Oz? No, what happened? So The Wizard of Oz was released in 1939, and the original actor who played the Tin Man, after two weeks of working, he actually had to quit because he was dying of poisoning from aluminum. Because they were actually grinding up aluminum, putting it into powder, and putting it on his face, and it was slowly getting into his lungs. So he had aluminum in his lungs, and he couldn't breathe. So they had to get a new actor. And the actor who played the Lion had so much makeup on his face that they would not allow him to eat food. So he just couldn't eat. And apparently his costume was actually made out of real lion hair. And it was super heavy. So it was even hard for him to breathe. And the actor who played the scarecrow actually has permanent scars all over his face from the prosthetic and makeup that he had to use for the scarecrow. Dude, what are they doing to these people? <laughs> yeah, and the dog Toto actually made more money daily than the Munchkin actors made the whole movie. The dog? Yeah, and the actors who played the witch actually suffered second degree burns from an explosion that happens in the movie. You can actually see the explosion happen where she actually gets burned and her hair and her clothes caught on fire. Okay, I had no idea that movie was that dark. Dude, it's sad that these actors had to suffer from all this. I mean, I know we talked about this before where I talked about the asbestos in the snow. Yeah. But I didn't realize all these other dark things that were going on. Why would they put... a actual aluminum on the guy's face i don't know when I they mean, just could make silver paint well it's a different time back then right they right. just thought like oh we need to make him realistic so we're gonna get aluminum because that's like tin you know what i mean yeah like, aluminum can oh my gosh it's crazy i would have never thought okay so do you know the darkest movie where a guy actually pays people to do bad things to themselves wait what so the story starts out with a young girl named iris and she's struggling to make money and she can't find a job and she's trying to take care of her brother named raleigh and raleigh's actually suffering from leukemia and he needs treatment so iris is trying to find ways to make money for his treatment so she goes to his doctor and she asks the doctor is there any way that you can give us a discount or help us in any way so the doctor Doctor introduces Iris to this guy named Shepard Lambrick. What a name that is. Yeah, so Lambrick offers to help Iris, and he just has one condition. And that condition is that she has to attend his dinner party if she wants to get the money. And if she comes, he'll help her. Okay, that's kind of weird. So he tells her that there's going to be other people at the dinner trying to compete for this money. But if you win at the end of the night, you're going to get money, you're going to get housing, you're going to get education. Basically, anything that you need in life, he will provide for you. So that night, Iris calls Lambrick and agrees to go to this dinner. So he sends her a car and she hops in the car and she goes to the dinner and she gets to this mansion and the butler greets her. And when she walks into the room, there are seven other contestants there that's also at the party. And before they start the dinner, the butler makes everyone hand over their cell phones so that they have no other contact with anybody outside. So they go sit at the table and they start to serve the dinner to them. And each meal has steak and mashed potatoes. But for Iris, she's actually vegan. So she's like, I can't eat this food. And Lambrick's like, oh, sadly, there's no other options. This is the only dinner that there is tonight. So Iris is like, okay, I'm just not going to eat tonight because I'm vegan. So Lambrick Lambrick looks at her and says, you know what? I'll give you $10,000 if you eat the meat instead of not eating. And Iris is like, what? And she starts thinking about it. And then she just starts eating the food. She just starts eating the meat, even though she's vegan to get the $10,000. So he literally gave her 10 k just to eat the steak. Yeah. And then there's another guest at the table named Conway. And basically, he's a struggling alcoholic, but he's been sober for 16 years. And at the dinner table, he's not drinking any alcohol. But Lambrick's like, why aren't you drinking? And he's like, oh, no, I gave up alcohol. I'm no longer doing that. And Lambrick's like, I'll give you $10,000 if you drink. And he's like, no, 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 I can't do that. I've been sober for 16 years. That's not what I'm going to do. And then Lambrick's like, okay, what about $50,000? If I give you $50,000, will you drink? And Conway's like, oh. 
okay, I guess I will. So Conway accepts and he just starts drinking. Okay, why is he making him do all this? Well, this is where things get really dark and crazy. So Lambert reveals to everyone that, hey, we're going to be playing a game and this is the game for tonight. We're going to be playing a deadly game of Would You Rather. And for every round, each person will have to decide between two options. And if you decide to not do anything, you will be eliminated. So the first game begins and the butler brings out this electric machine and everyone has to put these electric headbands on their head. And each contestant has to decide if they're going to electrocute themselves or electrocute someone else what yeah so conway doesn't want to do this so he gets up and like hey i'm out i'm not doing this he, and he tries to get away but as he's running away he gets shot so then everyone at the dinner table is like okay we better just listen because this guy's gonna kill us if we leave so the first two people put the headbands on and the first guy decides to electrocute himself and let the other person be safe and then it moves on to the next two people and, and basically they go back and forth electrocuting each other throughout the whole round dude what kind of game is this yeah it's pretty brutal so the next round starts and the butlers and all the workers lay on the on the floor like all this plastic like plastic wrap to protect the floor and lambert gives iris two choices you can either stab someone in the leg or lash this guy named travis in the back three times and travis tells iris like hey you'd rather lash me three times and stab someone so iris gets up and she has like this wooden thing and she hits travis and lambert goes like dude that was way too soft like that won't count so she has to do it again harder so after she hits him three times she sits back down and then it's the next guy's turn to have the same choice would you rather stab someone in the leg or would you rather hit travis three times and the guy decides to hit travis three times because no one wants to stab someone so you keep hitting travis and then travis is asked travis would you rather stab someone in the leg or get hit three more times and travis is like i'd rather get hit three more times dude this is crazy yeah so this keeps going on and on and basically it gets to a point where the next person that has to go realizes that if Travis gets hit one more time, he's probably going to die. He just decides to stab the old lady. What? Yeah. And then the next girl who goes has the same option. Can, she could either stab someone in the leg or hit Travis. And she goes like, hey, is there any way that I could just stab someone wherever I want instead of just the leg? And Lambert's like, sure, go ahead. So she's like, okay. She gets up and walks up to Iris and just stabs her right in the stomach. After that, the round was over and they have to wait for the next game. But before the next game starts, all the guests at the dinner table try to fight back and they start to try to cause like a distraction. But in the process of this, a lot of the guests die. So who's left? So now there's only four people left at the dinner table. And the next challenge is who can hold a firecracker? So this guy gets up and he has a firecracker taped to his hand. And of course they light it and the thing blows up and the guy dies. And the next round happens and they all have a card. And the challenge is that this guy has to cut his own eye. The guy does it. And the next round happens and now it's Iris's turn. And Iris has to go in a barrel of water and submerge herself for four minutes and hold her breath. And she's able to successfully do it. But then the next girl named Amy, she has the same thing. This bucket of water. And she has to be under there for four minutes. But... This is the catch. The butler, like, she's kind of, like, really bad. She's a bad person. She stabbed Iris. The butler grabs her before she could take, like, her like her breath yeah. and just puts her in the water. <laughs> oh, my God. And, well, it's it's sad. But it, she's a bad... She's, like, the bad guy. In okay. The movie. Well, one of the bad guys. Right. And she drowns. And she's the one who stabbed Iris. Yeah. She didn't even try to help anybody on the team. Like, she just... Want, she was out for blood. She wanted to kill people. Oh, what the heck? So she dies. Yeah. So the final challenge had Iris and this one guy sitting across from each other. And basically, Lambert told Iris, like, look, here's your option, okay? You can either get this gun and shoot him and kill him. Or you put the gun down. You guys just walk out of here together. And basically, you guys leave empty-handed. Okay, what kind of choice is that? So Iris, right, she's trying to do this for her brother. So she kills the guy, shoots him. So after that, Lambert gives her the money. Like, hey, congratulations, you won. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to help you get the bone transplant, whatever you need for your brother. Uh -huh. Here's all the money. Iris goes home, and she takes a shower. She's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I just killed someone. And the next morning, she goes into her brother's room to say, like, hey, I, I got the money. Like, we're going to be okay. Yeah. So she goes to her brother's room. She opens the door, and all of a sudden, the brother is dead. What? And apparently, the brother, like, took his own life because he thought he was such a burden to iris because she's been gone like for a day or two and she, he thought that was really weird and he thought she left him because she was tired of him Dude, you gotta be kidding me so it was all for nothing what kind of ending is that it is the most disturbing movie it is okay the way i said it right yeah i'm explaining it to you and everyone like in the lightest way i can <laughs> okay i sat there watching this movie and i was just it's painful to watch. It's the worst ending. It's it's like equivalent to The Mist, okay? Oh, my like, God. Yeah. Don't watch The Mist. <laughs> guys, comment if you guys like these movies or stories or whatever it may be. If you have any stories or recommendations, let me know, and I'll gladly look into it. Dude, screw that movie. Screw it. <laughs> screw it. Make sure you leave a like button for that. I had to sit through that movie. <laughs> okay, so speaking of, like, super dark, scary stories, 
This is why you should never look yourself up on Wikipedia. Wait, what's wrong with that? So there was this really good figure skater named Anora Petrova from Oregon, and she was really good at figure skating. Like, she was projected to be one of the best ever. And she was becoming more and more popular, and she also had a very big competition coming up. So she decided to Google herself to see if anybody was talking about her the night before the competition happened. And what's weird is she found a Wikipedia page about her. And on this Wikipedia page, it said that she had won the competition that didn't even happen yet. And the weirdest thing is that the next day she won the competition. Wait a second. So the Wikipedia page predicted that she won. Yeah, and she thought it was just a coincidence. But then a few months later, she had another big competition. And just for fun, she wanted to check the Wikipedia page again. And once again, it said she was going to win. And she actually ended up winning. And this kept happening for a few months. So she kept winning and winning, just like the Wikipedia page would say. But then she had a really big competition. Like this was the one that would defy her career. This is the one she actually needed to win. And when she went to go check the Wikipedia page, it wasn't updating that she had won the tournament and she decided to type in herself that she would win the next day but then after she updated it updated on its own and it said Anora Petrova will never win another competition she was a failure in her career and she'll never be as good as people thought she would and she literally ended up losing the competition after that what is up with this Wikipedia page that is crazy yeah but this is where it gets really dark so after losing every single competition after that Wikipedia page updated it updated again and it said that Anora's parents had died in a horrible car accident but Anora thought this was was really weird because she just talked to her parents a few hours ago so then she decided to call them and none of them were answering both of them just weren't picking up the phone and a few hours later she got a call saying that her parents actually died in a car accident and after this anor was just miserable like she didn't know what to do she couldn't do figure skating she didn't have her parents and then the wikipedia page updated again and it was predicting when anora would die but the date was literally a few hours away so then a few days go by and the police found her dead in front of her computer Two. This is crazy. Crazy. How does that Wikipedia page just predict it like that? Well, that's just, that's like Final Destination stuff. You yeah. Know? And what's crazy is, right, when she was trying to edit herself, she got blocked from editing it. And then she reached out to Wikipedia, like saying, can you help me edit this account? Like edit this page of mine. This is me. Uh -huh. And they're like, we don't have any record of that page. We don't know what you're talking about. Gosh. I mean, I am never using Wikipedia. Never using it again. I mean, that's scary. Can you imagine just looking yourself up and it says something happens that didn't happen yet? Like, yeah. it, like months later. That would be a really bad prank to play on someone. Because oh you know like how Wikipedia, you can like, you can literally go change people's pages. Oh, that's scary. Nobody do it. Don't do it, okay? No, no ideas out there. I suggest you just pretend I never said that. Yeah, so staying on the topic of scary stuff. Have you ever heard of the Red House in Singapore? No. So it said that nobody should ever try to enter this house because it used to be a child care center and all the children and adults were massacred in the house. And a few years later, people were able to move into the house. So a family of four decided to buy it and move in. But everybody thought that the children and adults from the child care center haunted the house. And shortly after the family of four moved into the house, the father went crazy and murdered his entire family and buried them under a tree in the backyard. Wait, what is going on here? What is, what is this? So shortly after he did this, his family haunted him for years and they haunted him so much that he actually died. So now the house is just full of dead people. And for people who want to visit the house, they need to follow very strict rules. So there's two lion statues in front of the house. And if you want to enter without being harmed, you can't wear the color red. And you also need to give the lion statue something. So you need to put candy in their mouth. And then you need to light a cigarette and also put that in the lion's mouth. And you can only be in the red house until the cigarette burns out. And if you stay in longer, then that's when you get harmed. So what, if the cigarette burns out, they're going to die in there? Yeah, but what's even crazier, a group of kids actually tried to do this. So what happened was they went to the house, but they didn't leave anything with the lions. They just hopped the fence and started going in the house. And then shortly after being in there, one of the kids just started bleeding from his mouth. Like, they didn't know why. He just started gushing blood out of his mouth. So they're like, we need to get out of here. So they just left the house. And once they left the house, the bleeding stopped. But then a few days went by, and the kid was just standing, walking along the street. And then a lamppost broke and fell on him so then they took him to the hospital and he actually died so they're saying like if you go visit this house and you don't perform like the actual steps to go in the house you'll actually die so wait these kids they they didn't follow the rules and then they yeah well one of them yeah but they were all bound to be in trouble yeah i mean if they stayed in there too long yeah. they probably would have died dude i just i just feel like there's so much stuff out there in the world where you think you know, like, what you know, 
And then you get surprised by stuff like this. Like, wow, that's actually out there. Yeah, so moving on from all the scary stuff, this is probably one of the craziest things I've seen. So did you hear about the guy who lived inside of a Toys R Us? What? So this guy named Jeffrey Manchester went into a Toys R Us. And you know how Toys R Us has, like, the really big bike racks? Yeah. So he literally made a living space within the bike rack. So nobody would know that he's actually living there. And to entertain himself, he would steal, like, remote control cars and go up on the roof and, like, play with them. And to get his daily exercise, he would test ride the bicycles around the store. Are you serious? How did no one see him. So what he did was he stole baby monitor cameras and set them up around the bike rack so he could see if anybody was watching him. And if he couldn't get any food, he would go to the baby section and just eat the baby food. But what's even crazier, he was a church volunteer that would give out toys to kids. But those toys were just stolen from the Toys R Us he was living in. Did they ever catch the guy? So what's crazy is before all this, Jeffrey actually escaped prison because he was serving a 45 year sentence because he was known as the roof man. And what he would do was he would go on top of the roofs of like fast food restaurants and he would break in through the roof and steal from them and after escaping prison they actually caught him because his wife ratted him out wait a second this guy had a wife so he had a, he had a home what's crazy is he would tell people that he had like a secret cia job so like he would be somewhere always secretive okay so nobody knew like what he would do and nobody questioned it i know but i'm kind of confused so he would live in Toys R Us okay yeah but he also had a home with the wife i, I think he didn't want to live with her because he didn't want to take the chance of being seen during the night you know what I mean? Because he didn't want to get caught. He's a convict. He, he escaped prison. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So he wanted to stay hidden. That makes sense. And he only came out like very sparingly. It's so funny how he was like the Robin Hood. You know, he was taken from the corporate business and giving to the kids. <laughs> Gotta respect it. <laughs> okay. So this is another crazy thing I saw. Have you ever heard of Rugball? What is Rugball? Okay, so I had no idea this existed, but in 2003, there was a professional sport made called Rugball, and it's absolutely insane. How do you play it? So there's two teams on a basketball court, and it's literally basketball, wrestling, and rugby all in one sport. Dude, that sounds so crazy. Yeah, so the only objective is to put the basketball in the hoop, but at the same time, you're wrestling the other team. This has got to be the most dangerous sport around. Okay, just watch this. So you see these monster guys just wrestling each other and playing basketball the same time and there's very few rules okay? okay you can't push anyone from behind while they're shooting and you can't grab anybody's leg so it gets super violent dude who thought of this sport <laughs> this is insane <laughs> oh my gosh like can you imagine just playing on that court with them no that, 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 that would be the worst experience ever it's just funny how you could tell like some guys probably argue with each other like on the opposing teams <laughs> and they don't there's no need to wrestle them like, right. you can just attack whoever you want just for the heck of it. Yeah. That's so crazy. Like, you just see them. Like, you, they, you can go at anyone. No, yeah. I, I saw. <laughs> yeah. like, there's a guy off to the side, not even near the ball. Like, they just start fighting. Like, no point. I mean, I don't know who thought of that, but that's a pretty gnarly sport. So, it has wrestling, basketball. It's like basketball, wrestling, okay. and rugby. Rugby. Okay. Because they don't need a dribble. They're just right. running with the ball. Got it. That's what, okay. I was like, yeah. the guys are running with the ball. Yeah, they don't need a dribble. All they need to do is put the basket, in, the ball in the basket, and that's how they score. Well, guys, I guess if you're a wrestler and if you're a basketball player or a yeah. rugby player, you may want to look into it. But it's funny, right? When you look at them, like, try to shoot, yeah. they're not very good basketball players, yeah. in a sense. They're just really strong, and they know how to get, like, they get close to the basket, so it's easy. When I look at the sport, you definitely have to be a certain type of beast, right? Oh, Physically, yeah. You have to be able to maintain um, being able to wrestle. Right. And then also be able to run. And to be able to shoot is just crazy. All these different types of movement you have to do. Yeah. It's insane. All right, guys. If you made it this far in the podcast, thank you so much for watching and listening. Guys, if you haven't noticed that our podcast is actually on Spotify and Apple Music, a podcast. So um, if you are ever driving or you're doing an activity, like you're in school and you're not supposed to be on your phone. <laughs> Use Spotify. <laughs> just, just give it a listen. Quick Use listen. those AirPods. I'm joking. <laughs> Don't do that. But uh, yeah, if you guys ever need like to just to listen to the podcast, or you're trying to sleep and you just you know want to have it playing. I don't know why you would listen to us when you're about to sleep. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I just threw out a scenario. Whatever your your case may be, if you want to listen to the podcast, it's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That's what I was trying to get at, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you like watching us, please uh, subscribe, hit the like button. As you guys know, we talked about we're going to be doing a giveaway of one of these hot toys if the video gets 3,000 likes. Also, comment what you guys want us to talk about next week. We took you guys' suggestions, and we talked about it this week. Feel free to submit any uh, suggestions you guys have on Instagram DMs as well. Yeah. So we'll see you guys tomorrow on TikTok, and we'll see you guys next Saturday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. We'll see you on the TikTok. God bless you guys. See ya. Love ya.